Hey friends, my name is Oleg, this is Mr. Bond, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Whenever we do a review of a watch, of a diver watch, that has 100 meters of water resistance or 150 meters of water resistance, and we complain about the lack of water resistance on the watch, we get many different comments, sometimes private messages, from people saying that we are being unreasonable. That the watch doesn't need more than 100 meters of water resistance, because very few people go deeper than 100 meters underwater. Well, one of those statements is correct, the other one is not. And that's due to the fact that the labeling of water resistance on watches is counterintuitive and frankly a bit confusing. So here's our quick guide to water resistance on watches. 30 meters or three bars or three atmospheres or 100 feet of water resistance. So this type of water resistance is a minimal water resistance on a watch. It's okay for everyday activities, but the watch is not very waterproof. So if you're uh, washing your car or maybe even washing dishes, I would personally take off the watch. If it's a very heavy rain, I would also take off the watch. The watch doesn't have very good gaskets, probably doesn't have a screw down crown. Uh, the case back is very likely a snap in place case back. So uh, this watch, minimal water resistance, Definitely don't go swimming with it. Definitely don't go diving with a watch like that. 50 meters, five bars, five atmospheres, or 165 feet of water resistance. So this is a bit better. You can uh, wash dishes, you can wash your car wearing a watch like that. If it's uh, raining really heavily, you don't really have to take it off your wrist. Uh, don't go swimming with it. Uh, don't go diving with a watch like this but most everyday activities are okay. Some watches with 50 meters of water resistance could have screw down case backs as opposed to snap in place case backs, but you should not expect screw down crowns. 100 meters, 10 bars, 10 atmospheres, or 330 feet. So these are the diving watches that I get a lot of complaints about whenever I complain about their lack of water resistance. So with 100 meters of water resistance, you can take the watch swimming, you should be okay for most everyday activities, but you should not go diving with the watch. You shouldn't do any uh, high impact sports like going cliff diving or going high board diving or water skiing with this type of water resistance. Now, I personally wouldn't even take the watch swimming, even if it has 100 meters of water resistance, unless it also has a screw down crown. If the watch doesn't have a screw down crown, a lot of Seiko 5 watches don't have screw down crowns, but have 100 meters of water resistance. I would not recommend going swimming with a watch like this. However, a lot of people still do that and they are fine. 200 meters, 20 atmospheres, 20 bars, or 660 feet of water resistance. Now we are in a diver watch territory. So in my opinion, that's the minimum water resistance for a diver watch. Pretty much all watches with 200 meters of water resistance have screw down case bags, have screw down crowns, have proper gaskets. Here you can go swimming with the watch, you can go aqua diving, or uh, freestyle diving uh, with a watch with 200 meters of water resistance. You can do some high impact sports like water skiing or maybe go off of a high board, diving into the water, take it to the swimming pool, do all these type of activities. But only go scuba diving, proper gear diving with the watch that has divers 200 meters written on its dial. So what is the difference between 200 meters of water resistance and divers 200 meters of water resistance? The difference is ISO certification. Divers 200 meters of water resistance have been tested and have been certified to meet international diving standards for a diver watch. So you should only go diving with ISO certified diver watches. However, with the standard 200 meters of water resistance, you should be okay with snorkeling, swimming, doing most of your water activities. Now there is a bit of a warning here and you have to pay attention to the company that makes the watch. For instance, if it's a company uh, like a Courget, nothing against the company, or L'Oreal, again, nothing against the company, but it is one of the AliExpress Chinese companies, you're not really sure how they arrived at that 200 meters of water resistance. Will the gaskets hold up? Will uh, the seal hold up? Uh, all these things are kind of questionable, should we say? So you should be careful with who is the manufacturer of the watch and who says it has 200 meters of water resistance. So uh, my general rule is if the watch comes from a reputable company, even some reputable micro brands, I'm okay, I feel comfortable taking it swimming with me, taking it to the lake. However, if it comes from one of these Chinese manufacturers, uh, kind of take it at your own risk. 300 meters, 500 meters, 1000 meters of water resistance. Now we're getting into professional 
commercial diver watch his territory, professional diving instruments. Again, you have to watch who is making that claim, who's saying that it has 1,000 meters of water resistance. Is the company claiming that? Is it Neymar on Amazon saying it has 1,000 meters of water resistance? But does it? Can you prove it? Can you test it? Maybe yes, maybe no. Or is it something like a Rolex Seedweller saying that they have 1,000 meters of water resistance? So you have to be also careful with these type of claims. And generally, watches with 1,000 meters of water resistance or even 500 meters of water resistance would have helium escape valves, they would have thicker cases, they would have thicker crystals, uh, some of them have double gaskets, all these different technologies to really seal up the case. So that's the general guide of water resistance in wristwatches. Now I want to give you a few extra tips. Number one, obviously don't operate the crown underwater. Don't unscrew the crown, don't pull out the crown while the watch is submerged underwater. Number two, don't go swimming or diving with a used or especially a vintage timepiece unless you know the service history for sure, because you don't know if the gaskets were replaced, you don't know how the water seal held up over the years. So I would strongly suggest you first find out how water resistant the watch is, first take it to the watchmaker before you go swimming with a used timepiece. Number three, avoid unscrewing the case back in your diver watches unless you know exactly what you're doing. And if you know that you're not going to damage the gasket, if you do damage the gasket, make sure you replace it before taking the watch for a swim. Number four, make sure to rinse off your watch after swimming in salt water. So what I usually do after swimming in an ocean or in the sea, I take it home, I run it under the sink in fresh water to wash off all the salt, which brings us to the point number five or the tip number five, make sure to rotate your bezel when you rinse off your watch, uh, even if you just swam in a lake, because there could be some sand particles getting stuck under the bezel. So what you wanna do, you wanna rotate it under running water, you wanna wash off all that sand, or if you were swimming in a sea, you wanna wash off all that salt and salt water from under the bezel. And tip number six, don't shower with your watch. A lot of guides online that talk about water resistance in watches say things like, if the watch has 50 meters of water resistance, you can take it to the shower. And I say, don't take any watch to the shower, no matter what water resistance, 200 meters, 100 meters, 50 meters of water resistance, don't take it to the shower. First of all, why would you? But second of all, uh, the combination of hot water and soap uh, over time degrades the gaskets. So the gaskets become weaker and uh, they degenerate over time and that compromises the water resistance of your watch. So if you want to have longevity of water resistance on your watch, please don't take it to the shower. So that's the water resistance guide and advice. I appreciate you watching this video until the end. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss more videos like this. And leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. General tips and advice type videos. And also leave a comment if you have some tips that I have missed for the maintenance and general water resistance of the watch. By the way, today on my wrist, I'm wearing Paliot Sturmanski. I did an unboxing video for this watch. That video can be found on the YouTube channel. I will also leave it linked in the description below. Also in the description below, there are two other links. Number one, there is a link to bondnatostraps.com. If you're looking for a good quality NATO strap and want to support this YouTube channel at the same time, buying one of these NATO straps is a good way to do that. And the second link is a secret link. Have a look if you're curious. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bond, Merry Christmas. What's this? What is this? You have a toy? That's a recognized by the mouse. What kind of toy is this? You have a new friend? <laughs> That's it. Okay.